Hello, footy fans, and welcome back to the Chip and Chase podcast. It's a Wednesday, so you know what that means. We're going to be wrapping up everything to do with Supercoach from the week prior. You know, going through how my team went, the best trades, the ins and outs from the from the week that was. Just a bit of everything, just to try and get you guys in the best shape heading into round three of the NRL season. So as you can see up on the screen, if you are watching on YouTube, if you're not, if you're just listening to this as an audio listener, this one is up on YouTube. You can see me, the face cam's up and running, and you can see my squad and everything that we're sort of looking at there. So if you want to see that, if you're more of a visual learner, head over to the YouTube channel. If not, if you're happy to just listen, then we can just get right into it. But for those of you who are watching, you can see right up on my screen right now just how I went this week. We've got the round two score right there, 1,055 for me. So ranked in the top 16% of the round. We went up 23 – no, sorry, we went up 32,890 ranks in the season ranks. So we're up to 41,962. Really happy with how we went this week. It was, you know, it's been a very old tough to the tough start to the season and you can only sort of work with what you got, but I didn't panic. I only made the one trade after round one, which you guys would have seen. Terrell May was brought in for Jason Tamalolo, who I just didn't want to deal with his minutes. So to make that one trade, I didn't panic and then to shoot up the ranks like this, really happy with that. So I'm happy with how the structure of the team's gone. You can see their team value, league wins, league wins doesn't really matter. We're playing overall uh, just in a, in a couple of leagues as, you know, just a bit of fun here and there. And, you know, we've still got trades to make. For those of you who know a bit of super coach, you'd probably know that this is the time to use one of your boosts. Of course, you get five boosts in the season and we will get into, you know, the best trades and stuff later on in this podcast, in this episode. But yeah, definitely a time to use trades. I used only the one, so... The one last week, so yeah, I'm equipped to use a few here. But yeah, really happy with this score. Obviously, only top 29% of all teams at the moment. But as I said, it's about building building money for first and just building a really strong side. So happy with that score. So we'll get into it, go straight into how the team went, do a bit of a team review. Starting from the, the hookers, I suppose. Again, if you're an audio uh, listener, I'll just read all this out to you, if not come over here watch this stuff you if yeah if you're watching on the youtube you get to see all of this um just my team you can see it all but we'll read through anyway brandon smith as my starting hooker got 37 not the best he played less minutes this game than he did in uh the first week which you know i was a bit shocked at he did look a bit gassed he, he looks so threatening though so i don't know what i'm gonna do i think we'll get into the trades later but Joey Lustig is definitely going to be a very popular trade-in option with the money he's going to make and just how he's been playing in general. Like, he genuinely looks like a play in your sides. So I don't know if Brandon Smith will be the person to drop down for that or if I uh, get rid of Danny Levi, who scored, of course, 39. He actually outscored Brandon Smith in this game. But again, that was Danny Levi with another try and still only scored 39. So, you know, I'm not as convinced on Danny Levi. But yeah, Brandon Smith's 37. It's not awful. It's not great, but we'll, we'll work with it. Into our second row was Tavita Totola, 46 this time. That's up on his uh, 37 or something that he got in the uh, first round. It's fine. It's not It's not the best score. You definitely want your front rowers scoring more than that, but it's a problem position, and I'm just happy to have someone who can score around that 50 for now and will work on front rower down the track. But the man of the moment, you can see right next to him, Terrell May. Uh, yeah, 69 came into the side for me in, in the lead up to this week. He played the entire first half straight and he had about 50 or something at halftime. I put up a story on that on the Insta. If you're not following the Instagram, go check that out, Chip and Chase podcast. We're getting a lot more content sorted for that one at the moment. So it's 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 sort of speeding up a bit there and you, yeah, you can just read a lot more as to things that I'm not going to say in my podcast. Uh, but Terrell May... Gun, really happy with that purchase. I think everybody brought him in, so it's not like I'm running any sort of pod, but I just want stock standard points in that position and 69, I can very much work with that. Unfortunately for my bench players there, Pawasa, excuse me, uh, Pawasa Farm Pharmacilli went off after the very first run of the game with a head knock. So, yeah, scored zero. His cash gen is not going to be very great. And uh, he is now missing this week with um, with their 11-day stand-down policy. So he's looming to be a bit of a sell. I guess you could keep him, but I'll probably end up selling him this week. 
And Sam Hughes, only 29, so not great. But, oh, well, he'll plod along. He'll earn me a little bit of cash here and there. We'll move into our second rowers. Hylam Lukey, only nine points, of course. I think he ended up playing about the entire first half or something like that. So he actually only scored nine in a, a fair bit of time. It might not have been the entire first half, but it was a fair few minutes. Regardless, he's done the ankle injury. So he's looking to miss about six to eight weeks or something with that. Um, so yeah, he's, he's going to be one of my trades this week. Um, there's a, there's a few options in that second row position, but not sure if I'm going to go up to someone to make money or down to someone, but he's definitely going to be one of my trades. Uh, the other ones in there, Brendan Piacora is 48. Fine with that. Again, that's all base. That's no attacking stats. Uh, they've got the Panthers this week, so it could be tough going for him again, but I'm sure he'll burst out, you know, sooner rather than later. So happy to have him in there. And Morgan Smith, he's 49 points, all base. You know what you're going to get from him, so I'm happy with that. And you can see the bench there, Bo Furmore did not play. So there's another one of those sort of mid ranges that I can get back for this week and bring him in and hopefully get some points there. They've got the doggies. So potential for some attacking stats there. David Feet are still out. So I'd assume for more lines up with Kieran Foran. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, alternatively on the bench, we have Joe Chan's 59. Not bad. He did get a try assist, line break assist, I think, with that in one of the Pappenhausen tries. So there are some attacking stats there. That's not all base, but at that price point, it doesn't matter. Whatever you're scoring, if you're scoring 59, I don't care. I don't care how you do it. You're just going to make me money, and that's all I've got Joe Chan for. And William Fafita, as I said last week, sort of just happy to have him as a bit of a, a dual position nuff at the moment. Obviously did not play. He has been named on the bench this week for the Dragons, though. So it could be a little bit of a headache, maybe an AE nightmare. We'll have to see. Uh, moving into a halfbacks. In the last podcast, I said, you know, maybe Hines is probably the clear-cut option as a captain. 75 points isn't bad at all. If you did end up just going the straight C on him, you wouldn't, you'd take that. It's not bad at all. I ended up sort of trusting my gut feel and putting the VC on him. And you can see the captain down there, but we'll get to them in a bit. Uh, but yeah, 75 points from Nico Hines, much improved performance after round one. He's still set to lose a lot of cash. So I don't know if you want to trade him to maybe free that up. Sure. But I don't see the reason to, you don't really lose what you don't sell. Like you're not going to lose that cash if you keep him the entire season. Plus he has the Tigers this week, so he could score 300. Who knows? Uh, but my reserve, my first reserve for this side, Nathan Cleary, my other halfback, 73 from him. So the two guns, they backed up their first round efforts with an actual, you know, decent scores in this one, 73, 75. I thought Cleary would have scored a bit more than that. He had a couple. Oh, I guess they probably didn't give the Leota one a try assist to him. But regardless, Cleary looked good, 73 points, happy with that. Dylan Brown, my 5'8", 65. Also someone who I thought probably would have scored a bit better. He had two try assists in this one. Um, but again, I don't really mind 65 points. It's, it's fine for now. While the gun, Ethan Strange, my backup sec, uh, five, eight, sorry, not a second row, Ethan, bit, bit small for that. But, um, yeah, 60, 61 from Ethan Strange. Really, really happy with that. He had a very reserved first game. If you listen to the other podcast, I would have, you know, said that a fair bit, but he just, he looked so dynamic in that second game. Really, really confident running the ball, overcalling Jamal Fogarty whenever he saw any any sort of space. He'd just overcall and t attack that line. So I was really happy with what I saw from Ethan Strange. He'll prove to get some good cash generation. And honestly, he could even be a play maybe, maybe later on in the season. That is 61 with a try, but it looks like he can get those attacking stats every now and then. Obviously not going to do it against the Warriors this week, but yeah, really happy with what I saw from Ethan Strange as my backup 5'8". Uh, in the centre wings, this is where I've been really happy with my team. I went early on just a lot of base. I wanted guns in the centre wing, or at least, you know, some maybe not the higher end guns. I couldn't really afford Greg Marju, which has turned out to be a bit of a blessing. Um, but yeah, I wanted base in my centre wing, and here we are again. Ramian 64. Uh, Tui Vasek 75, Talon May 53, and Ben Trebojevic only 33, but he was pushed out to the centres for a lot of the game. Tommy Talau had a uh, head knock, so he missed 15 minutes. Where Trebojevic shifted to wing, uh, shifted to centre, and uh, Tolatau Kula shifted to the wing to replace Talau. So there was 15 minutes there, then Talau came back, and then about 
20, 15, 20 minutes into the second half to Lau done his ankle. So once again, Trebojevic was shifted out to that center position. So 33, probably all in base. So I, I haven't checked exactly how he scored, but it's fine. Happy for that. And he'll score more in the future. It's just, it is what it is. Uh, my other center wings, I ended up putting reserves on two of them. As you can see, if you're a visual watcher here, Jesse Arthur's 57 points off my bench. He downgraded a lot, which as he did last week, I'm pretty sure he had about 60 in um, like before updates last week and then dropped to about 45 or something. It was a bit ridiculous. Uh, 48, I think it ended up dropping to. But I played him this week. He scored the 57. Very happy with that. Jack Bostock, who I didn't play, uh, scored 77. So really, really good stuff there. Looks like he were in a bit of cash. Not this week, though, with the Dolphins on that buy. And Tane Torpiki, only 51 from him. Again, thought he played better than that 51. He came up with the try assist to Dallin Watanez Lesniak. So I thought he would have got a bit better than that. But again, 51. It's not, not bad for my playing reserves. Uh, James Tedesco, the man of the moment at fullback. I ended up putting the captain on him and he repaid me with 103 points. Not many. There, oh, there might have been a few 100-point scores this week, but I don't think there were any in the fullback position. Maybe Reese Walsh would have got close to it. But, yeah, uh, oh, Hammer definitely would have. Maybe even Pap. Okay, maybe shut up. Few, few, a few fullbacks might have scored 100s. But regardless, James Tedesco, 103. Really, really happy with that score, especially because I put, put the captain on him. So doubling that to 206. Yeah, definitely the, the man of my week. He, he helped me along and helped me rise up those ranks. Really happy with him as a purchase so far this season for what his output is. For his price point compared to the other guns, just yeah, could not be happier with how James Tedesco has performed for me. Um, however, on the other end of the spectrum, Kalen Ponga, 45 as my reserve fullback. So he's gone pretty low two weeks in a row. A lot of people are looking to sell him this week. He is the third most expensive player in Supercoach. So he's set to lose a fair bit of cash. But once again, why you don't you don't lose what you don't sell. Like if I hold him, it's not going to make a difference. I'm holding him. I don't want to waste trades. He's going to come good. He's going to hit his strides. And when he does, he, everybody's going to want him back. If he doesn't, well, I'll, I'll reconfigure that. But, you know, if you look at looking just at these games at the moment, who do I want as a fullback? You know, Trebojevic has Parramatta. Is he going to score amazing there? Who knows? Uh, Pappenhausen has the Knights. Knights haven't been good, but also the Storm do not have half of their, uh, well, their entire spine essentially. So might not go very well there. Drinky hasn't been great, but they do have the Dragons. Like, look, there are options. Potentially I could sell him to Pappenhausen and get that that cash generation, but it's not really something I really want to do. And I have more pressing like trades that I want to do for my team. So Callum Pong is 45, not great, but you, you, you know, you, you get what you get. Um, so that sort of just wraps us up for the little bit of the team review going through all of that. We will actually move on to the ins and outs, a bit of teamless Tuesday news. Once again, if you don't follow the Instagram, you definitely should. I have, started releasing some content there. So a lot of this, what I'm going to say here is already up on the Instagram. So if you've seen this content, feel free to skip ahead. If you are watching on YouTube, I do have timestamps in the description so you can skip past this, but we will get into it. I'm going to be looking over here on my second screen for this one. So don't mind the, uh, the odd camera, but coming out of teamless Tuesday, first game Panthers Broncos, a few new, a few big ins and outs here. Uh, Fisher Harris is out for the Panthers. Lindsay Smith, uh, has been promoted to start at front row and Matt Eisenhuth has been promoted to the bench. This could mean decent things for Liam Henry, but we'll have to wait and see. I don't, we're not quite sure how long Fisher Harris is out for, but yeah, definitely could mean some good things for, um, for Liam Henry. If we're, if for all the, those who, who own him, uh, for the Broncos, Adam Reynolds is out, big out for them. Jock Madden replaces him at halfback. That's not too much uh, super coach relevant. I don't think many people own Adam Reynolds, and I doubt many people at all own Jock Madden. 
Maybe if you're a draft player, you can look at that. But I don't think Reynolds will miss too much game time. So probably not too, uh, not worth it, really. And just uh, dropping very, very recently, Payne Haas has now just been ruled out for the Brisbane Broncos as well. So Fletcher Baker is now promoted to start at front row. And Xavier Willison has been promoted to the bench. So all of you who actually managed to choose Xavier Willison and kept him after we knew he was going to get dropped for the Vegas games. You get a bit of a stroke of luck come your way with him getting named in this one. Uh, we'll move on to the Warriors Raiders game. So Wade Egan has once again been named for the Warriors. He was named last week as well and dropped out. Apparently it's a bit of a week to week basis on him. They're not quite sure how it's all sort of playing out. So he could very well drop out again and Freddie Lussick start. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, Seb Chris for the Raiders has been dropped dropped with concussion. Sorry, he's not dropped. He's just out with concussion, which means uh, Hopawate has gone to center and Nick Kotrick comes back onto that wing. For any Nick Kotrick owners, could be nice for you, um, but I doubt there's too many left and I don't think you'll score too well against the Warriors anyway. So, uh, While the big news out of this game is Elliot Whitehead's return. So he returns at second row, which means Zach Hosking, the absolute gun of Supercoach so far this season, drops to the bench. And Mariotta is out, but again, not too relevant there. So that one, we'll talk a little bit about that, but that is very big. I think Hosking is currently, we can scroll down here, uh, he's the second most traded in player behind Joey Lussick this week. For players not in my team, but I doubt many people in my team are getting traded in, to be honest. Um, so, yeah, probably second most traded in player. I assume he might have been first if um, if this news wasn't broken. Like, if, if we didn't see Whitehead named, he's currently traded in by 8% of players. That's ridiculous. For almost 15,000 people trading in Zach Hosking. It's still not a bad trade. We will get to trades later on, but he's expected to make a lot of money. He's got a minus 56 break even. And while he has been named on the bench with how he's played, you can't expect him to spend the entire game on the bench. I could still see him playing upwards of 50 minutes. I'm not sure where, you know, their second rows are stacked, but where Elliot Whitehead could go into the center. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. I was going to bring in Hosking. Not anymore. Cause I don't really want to deal with that. Um, but yeah, if you want to bring him in for that cash gen, you could. It's definitely not my advice, but it, I can see a merit to that decision. But yeah, very big news breaking out of the Canberra game there. Uh, so on to the next game, we have the Roosters and the Rabbitohs, the clash between the oldest clubs in the NRL. So for the Roosters, Luke Keary, he is out with concussion. Sandon Smith goes to 5'8". Connor Watson will join the bench. So could be uh, good if you're, if you're a... Brandon Smith owner like me, but who knows? Maybe Connor Watson even eats into more minutes there. Um, C.Y. Wong, this is the big news. C.Y. Wong has been dropped by the Roosters. Nat Butcher has been promoted to the starting side and Angus Crichton joins their bench. Really tough stuff if you're a C.Y. Wong owner. I, I, didn't, I won't say I saw it coming, but this is why I didn't want to go for any of those Roosters second rowers. They've got guns all across the park. They've got guns in reserve grade. It's going to be tough for players to keep spots. And I don't think C.Y. Wong's been bad. Don't get me wrong. But there's just so much competition for minutes. And if somebody's killing it, then then stuff like this can happen. So tough luck for all owners there. Uh, for the Rabbitohs, Jack Whiten has returned for them from his suspension, making his debut at centre, which means Richie Kennard drops out. Not too much notable there. Obviously, you wouldn't have Jack Whiten knowing he had the had the suspension he had to serve, but you get a couple looks at him. Maybe he could be an option down the track. Uh, Lachlan Ilias, the halfback, has been dropped and he's replaced by Dean Hawkins. I'd assume Dean Hawkins is bottom dollar. I'll actually have a quick look at that. He, did he play last year? He might have. No, don't worry. It's not not learning at the moment. Um, but potentially if, if Dean Hawkins kills it and keeps that spot, maybe an option down the track but I'd assume he's probably only half back only so I'm not sure I'd really want to get rid of my guns and lastly Jacob Jacob Host returns for the South Sydney Rabbitohs he goes in the second row which means Talis Duncan is back to the bench he ended up playing off the bench last week anyway with Cameron Murray at second row and Shaq Mitchell at lock Shaq Mitchell has been dropped out of the side as well but yeah it's just 
for all those who went early on Talis Duncan, I mean, I don't really have much sympathy for you. It's this is the stuff that can happen. He could still perform well. Who knows? It might work out for you, but we'll see. Uh, but that's about it for the Roosters Rabbitohs. On to the Bulldogs Titans. Pawasa Farmasili, as I said, out with concussion. He's You can see him in there in my team. He's replaced by uh, Liam Knight. So Liam Knight, he's decently cheap. Maybe if he keeps that position and gets good minutes, he becomes an option. But we'll have to see. You know, Pawasa could just come back into the side next week. We'll, we will just have to wait and see for that one. But yeah, a bit of a kick in the dick for everybody who's gone Pawasa, like myself. And for the Titans, Kieran Foran returns from injury for the Titans. Uh, they obviously had the bye last week, so maybe he could have returned last week. But he obviously missed round one. So, yeah, good to see him back. Could mean really good things for both Furmore owners like myself. But we move on to the Dragons and Cowboys game. So, a host of changes for the Dragons in this one. Francis Molo is out suspended. So, they've moved Jack DeBellin to starting prop. Luciano Leilua to second row. And Tom Eisenhuth to the lock. Uh, lock position to replace DeBellin. So that means Viliami Fafida has been promoted to the bench at the expense of Molo, obviously, who dropped out. So, as I said, I've got him down there in my second row. Uh, yeah, it could be a bit of an AE nightmare if you own him, but we'll have to see. He maybe gets some minutes. Maybe he scores a try. Maybe he gets some attacking stats. You know, one can only hope. Uh, they also lose Jacob Little out of this one. He's replaced. I think it was a uh, concussion for Little, so hopefully not out too long. But he's replaced by Jesse Marshke, who comes in at number nine to make his debut. I would expect Connor Mulheisen to end up playing or starting at hooker in this one, which isn't too much notable for either of them. If Little's only out for a week, then neither of them are options. But, yeah, important to note that Marshke has been named at nine. I'd expect him to actually come off the bench and Connor Mulheisen will play starting hooker. And then the big one out of this game is from the Cowboys team, Hylam Lukey, as we said, out with that ankle injury. It's expected to be about six to eight weeks for that injury, so it's a fair bit of time. It's, it's, it's tough to really know what's going to go there. He definitely looms as an important sell head, heading into this round. Uh, you just can't really keep that much money on your bench for that, that period of time. But he's replaced by Finnefiliaki in the starting second row, and then Jack Gozieski comes onto the bench. Finifuiaki, I'd wait a week. You could go early. Obviously, he will probably get a bit of a price rise this week, but I just want to see how he plays in that role. So I'm going to wait a week on Finifuiaki, but he does loom as someone that could be could be a good little pickup for for cash generation. Maybe even a playable player in your uh, in your team each week. So definitely one to keep an eye on there. Uh, but we move on to the Tigers and the Sharkies. So for the Tigers, Stafford Toa is out injured. He's replaced by Justin Olam, who comes into the team to make his debut for the Tigers, which means the Fahatape, I believe it was, the other centre for the Tigers. He could be an option. He's bottom dollar price. Looks like he'll get a bit of extended game time in there. Could be someone that you can bring into your uh, into your centre wings and and make a bit of cash there with Toa's injury being sort of long term. Uh, definitely wait more, one more week, of course. That's the luxury we get with the Tigers. They missed round one, so they won't get price rises this week. They'll get them next week. So it could be one to look at there. Uh, meanwhile, Jaden Sullivan dropped to the bench. Aiden Caesar has been promoted to halfback. If you watch the podcast, listen to the podcast, you'd know this is what I've been calling for. I thought Jaden Sullivan was really, really poor. So, yeah, I've got no shock in that one. I expect it to stay that way. Well, for the ti- uh, not the Tigers, for the Sharkies, Britton Nicara suspended two weeks, replaced by Jack Williams at second row, and Billy Burns has been promoted to the bench. Not too much there. Sucks if you're a Britton Nicara owner, like I was also looking to be. So it looks like I've dodged a few bullets, thankfully, with Marju and Nicara. Uh, but we move on to the Eel Seagulls. So big news here, Bailey Simonson out. It's only concussion. So he'll probably be back next week. But he's replaced by Blaze Talangi, who makes his NRL debut for the Eels. Absolute gun coming through the grades. So there's every chance he just kills it and keeps that position. We'll have to see. He could be someone that the Eels have really been crying out for in, in their back line. Just that explosive, just talented player. Because he really is talented, Blaze Talangi. So good to see him get his shot. Uh, Brendan Hands has been dropped. Replaced by Luca Moretti on the bench, which is amazing news we it took three weeks but brad arthur has fulfilled on his promise of doing an 80 minute hooker seems like yeah we will get joey lusick for 80 minutes he played 77 last week so 
you know, almost almost 80 anyway. But yeah, Joey Lusick definitely looks as a buy if you don't already own him. And potentially, yeah, a good play in your 17s each week. Should be really good base. And hey, he's picked up a few attacking stats along the way. So maybe he can just keep doing that. Uh, but that's it for the Eels. Seagulls, uh, Tommy Talao out injured, replaced by Raymond Vieger. Not too much to note there. Doubt you own any of them. And then finally, the Knights and Storm, last game of the round. Greg Marju, the big news there. He's out for four weeks. Wrist injury. Uh, replaced by Nari Tuala, who missed last week with an injury of his own. I thought it was concussion, but it might not have been. But he comes back into the side to replace Marju. Jackson Hastings has been dropped at halfback, and he's replaced by Jack Cogger. Again, not too much to note. Probably don't own those sort of players in Supercoach. You might own them in draft. So, you know, there could be a, a few important things there. Maybe pick Cogger off the waiver wire. We'll have to see. Uh, but nothing to really note of main super coach. Meanwhile, for the Storm, Jerome Hughes is suspended for a week, which means Tyron Wishart will play halfback. And Christian Welch is also out. So new faces on the bench are Kane Bradley and Tepai Moroa. Not much to note super coach wise there either. And that sort of wraps up all yeah, the super co- all, all the teamless chat leading into this week. So we won't spend too much longer on that and we will get straight into our best trades of the week. So you can follow along right here if you're watching. I, you can see I've already used the boost. Fancy, fancy that. I think I'm going to go Hylam Lukey out to Zach Hosking. Would be nice. I'm going to go Josh Curran. The way he's been playing, definitely someone that you can play in your 17s. He actually frees up. 50k for me to do that and he's been playing at front row so I'd expect by round six he could get that front row duel and that could be a savior so my goal maybe is to hold Totola for six weeks Curran get that duel move him up and then bring in a gun second rower to replace him so I don't mind that trade in there we also will be getting rid of Farmer Silly not to anything special but we'll go to going to be a, a bit of a scroll down here. Liam Henry, same price point, 238900 So just that really cheapy range. He's expected to get good minutes and just keep improving in cash. He's going to be a slow burn as with Sam Hughes, but 35 points. If I had to play him, it's not the end of the world. And as I said, he should maybe get some increased minutes this week against the Broncos as well with James Fisher-Harris out. And now with my boost, I have the option. I will be bringing in... Uh, Joey Lussick, if I sell Brandon Smith, I end up having, what, almost 300K. Joey Lussick, I have over 300K. So I could do that and have 326,000 in the bank and keep Lussick, uh, Levi as a cash generator. But I'm not going to. I'm going to cancel that trade. I'm going to keep Brandon Smith I don't like the look of Levi's cash, Jan. He'll make a bit of money this week, probably another price rise the week after that. But I don't see it being too long-term. Brandon Smith, he's probably he's going to lose a little bit of cash. What is he going to lose? Expect to lose 1.7K. Uh, K, yeah, break even at 49. So it's nothing too bad for Smith. Definitely not someone I want to keep long-term. Don't get me wrong. But he's an option to play. I'm not actually going to play him, but he's an option to play. And he's just a, a lot higher ca- uh, price, so 500k. It's a lot easier to move him to another player. While Joey Lussick, not Joey Lussick, sorry, Danny Levi, if I wanted to move him to anyone else, it's going to be really, really difficult. So I'm happy to spend a little there to move Levi on, despite the fact he will make a bit of money. I'll move him to Joey Lussick, who will make lots and lots. I'll play Joey Lussick, and then I'll look to maybe sell Smith a bit more down the track, keep Joey Lussick until he tops out in, in in price but that's the trades i'm doing there um in terms of the best trades of the week i think josh curran has to be right up there with of all the you know of all the second row mid rangers he seems to be the best one he's averaging 64 so far this season he will probably gain that dual position you know with any luck so could just be a really good option in your front row when he gets that. He's 421k, which is cheaper than a lot of the other um, other mid-range second rowers. So, yeah, I think he's a good one in there. 
if you wanted to, as I said earlier, if you wanted to go Zach Hoskins, I don't hate it. I do understand the merit in doing it. But you're going to be bringing in a player at five, over 500K and you're probably not going to play them, at least not this week against the Warriors. While he's off the bench, it's probably going to be a wait and you're just going to do it to get that price range, uh, price rise, which he should do. Like if he goes onto the field and knocks it on and gets concussed in the very first play, he still makes money. So you can, you're can you going to make a little bit of money off here, a fair bit of money, like probably 50K regardless. But is it worth using a trade to bring him in? If he does end up playing that reduced role off the bench and gets you 20 points, you're going to look to trade him after one tr price rise. So there's one trade to get him in, one trade to get him out. I just don't see the value in that. Uh, but if that's the way you want to structure your team, you can do that. I'm just going to go with Josh Curran. Hopefully he can stay in there for a fair while, move him up to front row when uh, – if he gets, if slash when, I'm really hoping he does get that dual position. I'm going to ride on that. But for now, he's a he's a play off my, not even off my bench. He's a play in my second rowers regardless. So I'm happy to do that. And as I said, Joey Lusick in for the uh, money gain and Liam Henry in for Pawasa. So I'm using a boost. Nothing too expensive. Like I'm not bringing in any guns off a boost. But that's the whole point of this week. You want to be boosting. You want to just get your cash gen right because that is going to set up your team for the rest of the season. So in this case, I'm getting three players who will – all three will make money. All three have the potential to, yeah, you know, make 100, 200, 300K. In the case of Lusick, the way he's playing, he could just be a keeper. I doubt it. But, you know. But, yeah, you just want to get them in, make that money, and fleet them on later on. Uh so I'm happy to do that. I'm happy to use my boost to do that. There's not too many other options, of course, if we go down here to the most traded in, not in my team. As I said, Zach Hosking, we've already spoken on him. Luke Brooks is the now the second most, obviously probably third most behind uh, Curran and uh, Joey Lusick regardless. But Luke Brooks, I don't mind him as a trade-in. If you went a mid-range 5'8", or if you went someone like Ezra Mam, Luke Brooks is the perfect player to go to. Really, really like how he looks, and I just, yeah, just loving how he's um how he's playing at, at Manly. I don't need to go to him because I've still got Dylan Brown. So if yeah, but if you are if you have a struggling mid ranger, Luke Brooks firms is a really good option there. I think Tom Dearden could be a, a nice other option if you want to do that mid range five eighth. Ronaldo Mulatalo, he's expected to make a lot of money, averaging look at that last score of one hundred and sixteen, averaging one hundred and one point five from the opening two rounds. Excuse me. Um. Minus 24 break even, expected price rise of 95,000. That's, yeah, really good. You could do that. You know, I, I could flip any one of my players to do that and get that price rise. I'm not going to. I don't want, I, I can make my money somewhere else. You know, I've already got Jesse Ramey and I went as my pod. Sure, if I went, Ronaldo would have been better, but Ronaldo was never on my radar. He's too volatile. Started last year, incredible, and then fell off, fell off a, a cliff. So I'm not going to do that, but anybody who can afford to bring Renato in, that is a good trade. People are looking here at Pappy, 132 in his last game, averaging 81 from the two games so far. 5.2% of players bringing him in. It's not a bad shout, especially if you're downgrading one of these fullbacks, like, as I said, Callum Ponga. You make over 350, yeah, about 350,000 in that trade for someone who's playing better. He's going to make a little bit of money. I only expect to make just about 35000 But he's probably going to keep making that money. While Pong is probably going to lose some. But personally, I don't see Pappenhausen. While he's not kicking, when he's not a goal kicker, I don't see Pappenhausen as an end game fullback. Well, I do see Kalen Ponger as that. Sure, it might take him a few weeks to warm into that Ponger as it seemingly has. But later on down the track, you're going to have to move back to Ponger. And there's a trade to get him out to get Pappenhausen and free up that cash. And then there's a trade to get him in later on. It's not a bad option. As I said, you are firming for cash gen, which is what you want early in your season. But I'm going to get my cash in other places and hold my guns. And the other one down there, Luke Metcalf. Also not a bad shout for the... Uh, if you wanted to go a bit of a mid-range 5.8, he's a substantial bit cheaper than Luke Brooks at only 483,000. I don't hate it at all. Actually, it could be a really good pot option. I do like how the Warriors are going to play this year and he seems to be finding a few attacking stats and now he's goal kicking. You know what? Now he's goal kicking. It is a very tempting buy. 
I'm not going to do it this week because I'm really set on my trades and also I don't want to trade Dylan Brown. No, I'm not going to do it. Uh, uh, <laughs> nah, not going to do it, but no, nah, no, nah, I'm not going to do it. Okay, but look, as I said, if you went a mid-range 5 eighth, I actually really like it. I think that's a really good pod play. I actually might make a post about that for the Instagram and claim that I did it all myself despite the fact 2.6% of players have already brought him in. But not a bad option at 5 eighth in the terms of me. I'm not dropping Dill Brown. I'm not going to drop Ethan Strange because he's my cash gen. Even if I moved Strange down to centre wing, I probably want to bring in Lockie Galvin next week to get that cash gen anyway. So definitely won't be into my side, but I actually do like it as a bit of a pod play. Quickly looking over these most traded out, Kalen Ponga, 8% of players uh, trading out Kalen Ponga. Look, I can get it. He's expected to lose, as you can see there, almost 80,000. I, I'm not going to do it. I've said that already. We've spoken about him. Brent Smith is the next most of my team with 1.8% of players. I understand it. Not going to do it. Brandon Piacora, again, 1% of players. Not not too much, but people are looking to trade him. I can't understand it for the life of me. And people, not many at all, but people looking at trading Sam Hughes, Billy Army, Fafita. I don't get that either. So that's not too much to note there. But yeah, in terms of those most trade in players we've spoken on them you can all sort of get that if you do have any like questions that you want to ask me i just want my advice on should you play trade this player or that player or or, or who should i get in etc flick me a dm on the instagram as i said at chip and chase podcast you'll find me there and we can speak on that i can give you my, my advice and my tips on that one but as i said in the last one trust your gut on players i trust my gut on Ramy and sure he hasn't gone amazing but 62.5 average. Nobody owns him. I'm happy for that. I'm sure he's going to burst their versus Tigers this week, so he could score 300. Who knows? Um, but, yeah, trust your gut. That's the best thing to do for players. Okay, so that will sort of wrap up the, the, the trades of this week, trade advice. We will look at a bit of a sit v start real quick. So in terms of my team, let's just drop Smithies back. Jesse Arthurs has the Panthers. I'm not going to play him this week. I'm just going to switch that reserve over to Morgan Smithies. So my sit v start, my reserves are Kalen Ponga, Torpiki, Cleary, Smithies. I, I am tempted to play Brandon Smith. If you do have Brandon Smith and you're not trading him and you're doing a similar thing to me, if, if he's on your bench, I don't hate him as a play. I'm very worried about this Rabbitohs team from people I've spoken to in Rabbitohs camp or who know the Rabbitohs well, just a lot of diehard fans and stuff. They're worried about this team. They think there's a lot of bad things happening behind the scenes. And um, the Roosters, I'm, I, I think they're in for a really good year. They've played really well in the opening two games. And don't get me wrong, I don't think South Sydney have actually played bad. I know they're 0-2, and two, but I thought they've been pretty competitive, especially against some really good teams as well. But... I am worried about them. I wonder how long they can hold out and keep just, you know, keeping the spotlight off them. So I don't hate the idea of playing Brandon Smith. He might get increased minutes with Sandon Smith now at 5'8", but who knows what uh, what Robbo does there. I've actually got him as a, just a little bet on him as a try scorer this week. So I'm not going to play him, but I don't hate the idea there. In terms of the rest of my team, there's no one else I'd really... Uh, you know, entertain. You can go Joe Chan, but they've got the Knights at home. And of course, some of his points came off. Uh, try assists or attacking stats there. Jesse Arthurs, I don't like against the Panthers this week, especially without Reynolds and, and Haas. I think they might get blown off the park a bit. And he's scoring 57 and 48 with attacking stats. So not really someone I actually want to be playing, just sort of in good matchups as a, as a last reserve. I don't mind it. Boss Doc doesn't matter. He's got the bye. And as I said, Torpiki will be playing again. 51, of course, he did have the try assist, so it's not the best score. But they versus the Raiders. I think he can come up with some more attacking stats. I'm saying this as if the Raiders are a bad side, by the way. Raiders have been incredible to start the season. I've really loved what I've seen of the Raiders. But I think Warriors have to hit their strides. I think they've played really well in their first two games. And they've obviously, they're 0-2. They haven't come up with the Chockeys. But against the Raiders, I think they, you know... I think it's at home. It is at home. So I think they'll come up with the Chockeys. He could get some attacking stats there. Happy to play that. So, yeah, that's sort of where my head is at in terms of captains for the week. There are a few options here. Now, 
The big ones, I really like Nathan Cleary against the Brisbane Broncos in that Thursday game. Obviously, maybe not as a captain, but as a as a sneaky vice to start, I think it's really good. Of course, you know, you're probably sitting there going, you know, they're versus the Broncos. It's not the best, best option for a captain. Fair, but I think this Broncos team without their main players of Reynolds and Payne Haas... I think it could be close. I think they'll still be up for it. They'll want grand final revenge or redemption, if you will. But I like Cleary. I think he steps up in big games. He obviously did it last time he played the Broncos in that in that grand final. So I don't mind Cleary as a VC. I think he can come up with some good plays. Another one I'd tip for an anytime try scorer as well. So I, I really actually like Cleary as a pod uh, VC option. Again, I'm probably not going to do it, but I can see the merit in it. If you own Sean Johnson, actually, no, Sean Johnson, it all depends. He didn't kick last week with Luke Metcalf taking over. So his super coach days could be done now with, with that information. But in saying that, he could also score 100 in, in try assists. Who knows? I don't mind him if you have him, but I doubt many people have him. So we'll skip that. Roger Tuovasa Shek, I wouldn't captain him, but he could be in for some good points here. Uh, Roosters Rabbitohs. Obviously, you got the two fullbacks in that one. I'm not going to touch them, either of them, for a, for a captain. I think both could play really well and both could go 100 plus, but you never really know what you're going to get in a in a Roosters Rabbitohs clash. They always get up for it, no matter where they are on the ladder. So I'm going to avoid that one, but you could go the two fullbacks there. Bulldogs Titans. I doubt there's many Bulldogs or Titans players. Anyone will be looking to captain. Uh, Dragons Cowboys is an interesting one because Scott Drinkwater has very much underperformed, I guess, not underperformed from an NRL standpoint, but for a super coach standpoint, he hasn't hit the heights. We know he can going up against this Dragons team. I've been really high on them. And then they came out and did their performance last week. So I am starting to ease off that a bit. I think there's, there's a few scary things to see there. Scott Drinkwater could go very big against the, the Dragons there, so I don't hate that as a captain option. But the big one this week, West Tigers take on the Cronulla Sharks. Saturday, last game of the Saturday, so you've got a lot of games before that that you can VC. I'm going to stick the captain on Nathan... Oh, no, Nathan Cleary, on Nico Hines against the, against the West Tigers. I think it's a no-brainer. He's scored 75 last week, and he played well, but... We know what he can do to these teams. We know what the Sharks can do against the bottom teams in the in the NRL anyway. Tigers, I was really worried about them last week. Like there was just a lot of things that I was yeah, just concerned about in how in how they played and how they defended a lot as well. They were really passive in defense. And if you're gonna do that against this really big mobile Cronulla Sharks forward pack, you're gonna get blown off the water. And Nico Hines is gonna take advantage of that big time. So I think he's the clear-cut captain option this week. I said that last week as well, despite the fact I didn't captain him. But yeah, definitely probably my favorite captain option this week. Uh, we'll, move, we'll do the final two games as well. Eels, uh, Seagulls, sorry, don't know why it took me a while to say that one. Uh, not too much in the terms of the Eels. I'm not really going to captain a Dill Brown or anyone in this one. Manly, you could always, like, Tom Trebojevic is always going to be a captain option. If you own Tom Trebojevic, you can captain him against anyone and you know he's going to go well. So there's an option there. I'm not going to do it. I, a, I don't have Trebojevic, so I can't do it. But I'm not going to – I wouldn't do it if I did own him because of the Heinz matchup anyway and just because Seagulls versus the Eels and it could be a close affair there. Uh, and lastly, Knights Storm. I actually really like this one for Kalen Ponga. I think this is in McDonald Jones Stadium Sunday. Knights have started the season 2-0. and zero. They're going to want to repay their home crowd – I'm very tempted to go to this one, to be honest. Um, yeah, I think Melbourne without their halves, they, they'll be up for it. It's the Melbourne Storm, don't get me wrong, but I think KP is going to just prove that he's still the Dalian Player of the Year and he can just put that on. So I don't hate a KP captain. If you want to be different, if you want to be pod, I actually like it. I probably won't do it. I won't say I won't because obviously I changed my mind. It went... Tedesco last week anyway but I think I'm pretty set on the Nico Hines captain but I do actually really like a Kalen Ponga captain if you own him if, if you're not selling him and that's the other thing a lot of people are selling him could just be the biggest slap in the face to them 
not that he's probably watching Supercoach and going, oh, everybody's selling me. I'm going to play well. But it's just Pong is always up for that challenge. He knows the Knights have underperformed to start this season. He's going to want to be up for that. And, you know, last time the Storm played the Knights in Newcastle last season, the Knights played incredible and they got that win. So could be the same of that. So I really like Kalen Ponger as a captain option there. But as I said, I think the pick of the bunch has to be Nico Hines against that West's Tigers team. So, in fact, I will do that now. In terms of VC options, not too much. Obviously, I said I really like uh, Nathan Cleary against the Broncos, but I can't VC Cleary if I'm captaining Hines. I will put the VC on James Desco just in case, I think. You know, uh, yeah, 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 sure. VC on James Desco. Not too confident in that, but... Who knows? I think I'm going to probably stick to my captain anyway because there's options, you know, there's a few scary things in terms of uh, AEs this week with Fafita, Henry Hughes, etc. So that are the ca- those are the captain options for the week. And I believe that sort of just wraps us up, does it? Captain options. Yeah. Not too much I have to to comment on there. I am going to be doing, as I said, a few more, a bit more content on the Instagram. I've got a few things in the works, super coach related, non super coach related. So if you are interested in that, head over there. You can find a, a few more things maybe that can help you sort out what your your thoughts are in, in super coach. And if not, as I said, that's the place to DM me, message me, ask my advice. We can chat about this sort of stuff. So yeah, head over, follow me at, at Chip and Chase Podcast on Instagram. If you're not following me on all the other uh, streaming services. I'm on Spotify. I'm on Apple Music. Obviously on YouTube. If you're watching this one right now, but yeah, go head over there. Follow. Give me a follow on those ones. But yeah, that'll wrap us up on this one. So thank you guys for tuning in, and I'll see you guys next time. <laughs>